farming and food security have been in the news of late, given the uncertainty surrounding the war in Ukraine, plus adverse weather in big farming countries such as Argentina. But the UK has another problem. Their farmland is being swallowed up by rapid urbanization, which given the size of the country is a concern. Today, we are discussing the huge rise in building on farmland, sparking fears of food insecurity. Stay with us. Let's jump straight in then. What's going on? Quite worryingly, one recent report has suggested that the rate in which prime farmland is being built upon in England has actually risen 100-fold in the past 10 years, which has officials worrying about the country's food security. Since 2010, new homes have taken up farmland, which was capable of churning out 250,000 tons of vegetables, with as many as 300,000 new homes being built. Previously, England had set aside 60 hectares of farmland to be developed, but these days, that figure is closer to 6,000 hectares, which is a massive increase of course. The change in altitude comes in response to climate change, as land, which requires more irrigation and fertilizer, has been given up to development. Britain is also at risk of more severe weather conditions as climate change wreaks havoc on the island. Just last week, the country was subjected to its all-time highest temperature ever recorded, with farmers all over the country sent into a panic. And when you consider that 60% of grade 1 agricultural land actually falls into flood zone 3, the highest flood risk, then this gives you more of an idea as to why officials are beginning to worry. The charity who produced the report are urging the UK government to outline which land should be used for which use, and have called on officials to bring a brownfield first approach to house building. Brownfield is the term used for building on land that has previously been used for development. So what else do we know? Let's see. The UK government are reportedly working on a framework that will outline what certain land will be used for, but in true Tory fashion, it is thought that this is now been delayed due to Boris's ousting, and Crispin Truman, who serves as CEO of CPRE, the charity behind the report, said, For the first time in several generations, our food security is at risk, yet we've seen a hundredfold increase in the loss of our best farmland to development since 2010. Heating, eating, and housing are fundamental needs. A healthy environment, mitigating and adapting against the devastation threatened by the climate emergency, is the bedrock that underpins them all. We need to know what to put where. That that's why we need a land use strategy. And he's not wrong. Given the recent problems in Ukraine and the reliance of the world on their fertilizer and chemical products, which are essential for farming, the government has said the country needs to focus on its own food production. However, this isn't as easy as it sounds. Farming has long been unsustainable for the planet, not least due to the aforementioned fertilizers that many farmers use. And Truman went on to reference the cost of living crisis, as well as the housing crisis, suggesting there are a number of different priorities that the limited UK land needs to spread itself over. Of course, there are calls to move away from intensive farming and figure out a way to manage the land better. What do you guys think? What else did the report say then? Stay tuned to find out. Well, Truman went on to talk of a multifunctional approach, suggesting that we need to reconcile food production with better management for natural and cultural heritage and for public access, before going on to say, policies which are put in place now will be crucial in the coming years to ensure the most efficient use of our land in the the face of these challenges. The report was well received by food charities, not just in England, but in other countries who are keeping a close eye on the situation. And Soil Association food policy head Rob Percival explained that these decisions might take time because when it comes to land use issues, they're complex and the government have long neglected them. He said, given competing demands for food, nature, climate adaptation, and societal demand for new homes, transport and energy infrastructures, it's essential that government expedites its delivery of a land use framework. He went on to add that the recently announced framework, which we are yet to see, should mean that land is designated for what it is most suited to serve, with the best farmland set aside for healthy food production. But there was a word of warning. If the climate change issue spirals out of control, then it will only make the land use issue even more complicated. What do you guys make of this issue? Should the UK government stop using grade 1 agricultural land to build on? Let us know below. Grocery price inflation has hit a 13-year year high in the UK now. Stay with us. The UK is in the midst of an absolutely scandalous cost of living crisis, which has seen prices for everyday food products skyrocket. UK inflation is now at its highest level since April 2009, when we were recovering from the 2008 credit crunch, and that is, of course, being passed on to the consumer. Grocery inflation is now up to 8.3%, with some suggesting that the average grocery bill is set to increase by about £400 over the course of the year. However, politics 
politicians in Westminster seem to be doing absolutely nothing about the problem. I mean, they more than likely claim for their food shopping as an expense, so why would they care? Inflation has also weakened relationships between UK retailers and suppliers, as 26% of suppliers revealed that they had lobbied retailers for a cost price increase, which was refused. But this is affecting the everyday consumer most of all. As prices increase, wages are staying the same, which means people are having to go without everyday products. In one of the richest countries on earth, this is unacceptable, and the government, who are currently more interested in seeing who will run their shambles of a party than actually sorting out the cost of living crisis, should hang their heads in shame. Next up, UK farmers have spoken out about their fears of wildfires. As we briefly mentioned, last week saw the hottest temperature ever recorded in the UK, and some farmers are worried about what this might mean for their crops and livestock. Of course, last week's temperatures meant that the whole of the UK was at a severe threat of wildfires, similar to what we are currently seeing in California. One UK beef and crop farmer, Angus Gowthorpe, has spoken of how simple it would be for disaster to strike, suggesting that even something as innocuous as a stone going through a combine could provide a spark which could easily set off a wildfire in a dry field. He said, Obviously, there is that severe threat of fire if something goes wrong, a bearing collapses or something, or a spark, something overheating. There's a fairly high chance of fire breaking out. And other farmers have also spoken of being ill-prepared should disaster strike. Bar the obvious fire extinguishers most keep in their farms, there is very little to protect a crop field from a wildfire, which can spread in a matter of seconds to engulf an entire field. However, wildfires aren't the only concerns. The Sahara-like temperatures last week have already put paid to any ideas of a bumper harvest this year, as crops are dying off early due to the heat. Whatever happens in the short term, people need to wake up as the impact of climate change is slowly starting to affect daily life. What do you guys think? And finally, an interesting development in France. France have taken the step of outlawing any meat terms on plant-based products. The move sees them become the first EU member state to do so, and means nouns such as sausage, bacon, steak, and pork will all be banned from appearing on packaging. Strangely, burger will still be allowed to appear. The National Farmers Union have complained that the terms are confusing for their customers and shouldn't be marketed this way, which is probably fair enough. They have said that plant-based alternatives are not comparable to their meat-derived counterparts. I mean, they probably have a point. If someone wants to eat a real meat sausage, they shouldn't have to run the risk of being confused because they have simply misread packaging. We have all been in a hurry in the supermarket before and thrown something into our baskets that we might not have studied properly. The union went on to say, it will not be possible to use sector-specific terminology traditionally associated with meat and fish to label products that do not belong to the animal world and which, in essence, are not comparable. As of now, the rule will only apply to products manufactured or marketed in France. But the hope is that eventually, the decree spreads across the EU, as currently the changes don't apply to imported products, so there is still scope for confusion in this regard. What do you guys think of the new law. As usual, thanks for dropping in today, and remember to like, share, and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on more great bits in the future. Bye guys!